What's up guys and welcome to the second episode of the Lockdown Career Mode where today with Nottingham Forest we are back with more big games in the Championship. Our first away day at Ellen Road against Leeds United, Birmingham City home and also our first ever cup game at home to Colchester United as well. And there will be some more transfer activity as well. And we're beginning with some transfer activity too. You can see Jao Carvalho here, our Portuguese cam, says he's worried about some of the speculation surrounding him. And he wants me to give him another chance to prove he's the best man for the job. Mate, we've only played one game so far, but I'll consider it. And there is a bid for him as well. Galatasaray, I want to take him to Turkey for £6 million. This guy's a bit of a fan's favourite at the city ground, and they seem to like him a lot. So I'm going to reject the bid, but it is worth pointing out there is a £9 million release clause for him. If a club meets that, I'll let him go. But until then, I'm keeping him here. And another bid for one player that I have no plans to sell. Ajax want to take Matty Cash. Perform well on the opening day. And he's one of the best young players we got here. He's, he's staying here. And as I'm reading through some of your comments right now, thank you to everyone that gave me transfer suggestions in the last episode. And there were a lot of them. Uh, I'm seeing quite a few comments for Troy Parrott. And that would be a really good shout there. Parrott, of course, the young uh, Spurs striker, the Republic of Ireland, I believe already uh, senior international. So I'm going to add to the scouting list and uh, also the short list as well. I've seen a few comments for young Tyrese Campbell of Stoke City as well. Another good young striker, someone to watch for the future. Lewis Ferguson is a really good shout. Very versatile central midfielder playing for Aberdeen. He can play deeper and further forward and right through the heart of the midfield as well. I see a couple of comments for the Royals man Danny Loder as well. So let's see if we can get him from the Medeski Stadium to the city ground. Certainly wouldn't be against that sign him. And I see a few more Premier League youngsters that you guys are asking for here, including Brandon Williams, Smith Rowe. I see one there for uh, Chong at Manchester United. The, the problem I find is that these players here, I don't think they want to come here permanently, but I'd like to get them on loan. Unfortunately, though, there's, there's very little players available on the loan list in the Premier League, but I'll add those guys to the shortlist regardless, and maybe the clubs will have a change of heart. I see quite a few comments for Dale Fry. I've used him in two separate career modes before, both with Middlesbrough and with Aston Villa. He was good in both. I wouldn't be against getting him again. I'll add one more to the shortlist for now as well, but make sure you keep those transfer suggestions coming because the window isn't going to end until the end of the month. Mark Travers. I've seen a couple of comments for him. That's a really good shout. I wouldn't mind a young goal uh, goalkeeper coming in because Murich is only here on loan. Travers would be an excellent player to pick up. And so this is how our shortlist is now looking. Thank you guys for the transfer suggestions again keep them coming because the window won't slam shut until the end of the month any of these players would be really good signings to the city ground i think i think if we only choose one i'd probably get mark travers a really good young shot stopper or perhaps lewis ferguson from Aberdeen. however any of these guys coming in would improve this team for the future and for the present but we've just got another bid for matty cash from dc united i'm gonna block offers man I'm going to block offers. This guy is a superb young right back. He's going absolutely nowhere. So first of the three games today, and it is indeed our first away day of the season as we take on Leeds United at Ellen Road. In real life, they are top of the championship prior to the suspension, and they will be one of our rivals for automatic promotion this season. We won on the opening day, but this will be yet another tough test. It's Leeds away. Come on, Nottingham Forest. Let's make it two from two. Click to Augustine. As a pair play a couple of one two is Figueroa lost out, and as Jack Harrison has got Augustine with him, he'll find him. Golden chance, and Leeds are in front. Augustine found some space, and while Samba came out to meet him, it's a composed finish, and Leeds have the lead. Space on the edge of the area for Augustine, and as soon as he was played forward, I brought out Samba to put him off, but it's a really good finish in at the near post, and the hosts draw first blood in a big battle for promotion even so early on in the season just like against West Brom a half of very few chances if we get one in the second half we'll need to take it creativity is definitely lacking in the first two games it seems I know Thiago Silva scored and assisted against West Brom but today has been pretty anomalous for us but as Warren wins it back maybe a chance to break here Johnson through to that man Silva lovely first touch to be fair and he's fed through Watkins and Ollie steps in field and his shot is brilliantly blocked. That should have been 1-1. He wins it back though. Chance remains alive. It's Silva. It's Silva. Saved by Casilla. Better start. Johnson crossfields to Matty Cash. Uh, 
he rejected a bid bigs for him in the summer because again I, I really like the look at this young man I do he likes to get forward a lot an attacking fullback and he's got space to cross here Cash he's in the area he'll dink it towards the edge and Ben White turns it behind for a corner we've started this second half off really well as the corner's whipped in and Joe Worrell's header Sales just wide the post. Very good start. Luke Aylin into Adam Forshaw. And it's a lovely ball forward. And Samba read it. But can't deny the ball inside of Figueroa. Had to do very well there. As, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Samba with a save. And the header just over. Calamitous defending. What was I doing there? That's an absolute let off. Lee should be two goals up. Poor attempt. And we've got away with that. And as Johnson off the bench. Slides through Carvalho. It's Watkins, it's 1-1, one, one. Ollie Watkins, oh no, it's going to be disallowed for offside, isn't it? Oh, we've played well in this second half, I thought we'd found a leveller, Ollie thought he'd got his second goal in two, but the linesman flag is up, and it's disallowed, Carvalho slides him through, but it's the right call, he's a yard offside, they've got that one spot on. I like the movement from Ollie Watkins, and I'll say that much, you saw it against West Brom, and you've seen it today as well. All we've got to do is pick him out, play the balls through to him, and he'll finish the chances. And here's Sammy Amiobi. Oh, yes, what a finish from a tight angle. And Amiobi gives us the leveller. Learn that from Shola. Nottingham Forest have the equaliser. Big Bro gave him some tips when they worked together at Newcastle United and it pays off here away in Yorkshire. Wonderful finish as he steps in from the left and beats the Spaniard Kiko Casilla. Couldn't afford a loss on match day two and finally after a really good second half we found ourselves a deserved equalising goal. Well that will do it then. A draw on match day two away down the road. Would have taken a point pre-game and after a much better second half display we found our deserved leveller. 1-1 one, one the final score and I'll, I'll I'll definitely take that. Leeds are one of the best teams in the championship so to go to their ground and get a point is a good result and I'll give man the match to young Jack Harrison. Set up Leeds' only goal of the game and all game long look very dangerous. I definitely do feel that we need some better defenders in this team if we are to get promoted this season. Joe Worrell's going to be our captain this season at the back, but Figueredo, only 71 overall, not against cashing in on him. Obviously, Gaetan Bong has just signed for the club, and he got the assist in that last game too, so I'm fine using him for now, but for the future, we will need a better left back. And, you know, maybe we put a kid in our starting 11. Young Collins, only 18 years old. Not entirely sure. And I'm going to give him a start in our second of three games today in midweek as we take on Colchester United, the League Two side at home in the EFL Cup first round. A chance for fringe players to impress me in this competition. Let's see how we get on. Early corner for Forrest. Jal Carvalho whoops it in. And oh, off the crossbar there from our number nine, Da Costa. Just couldn't keep it down. Did take a deflection though, so another delivery to the middle. Headed away. Fast start from the championship side. Good tackle there by Ryan Yates. And a possible chance to break here. There's Dia Carbon plays it back towards Sam Basso. And away goes Semedo, playing out of position in right back today. He's got the number nine with him, and he'll find him. And there's John Bostock through the legs. And out wide towards Ribeiro, who crosses. And the header in on goal off the post. Second time he's hit the post tonight, Da Costa. So unlucky. Ryan into Sam Basso, carrying a slight knock. He feeds it out wide to Semedo. And a costal player, 1 2 with him. Golden chance here. Semedo from a tight angle. Good save, but surely. Oh, well, referee. Why would you blow your whistle there, mate? Play advantage. De Costa was surely going to turn that into the open goal. But instead, the referee pulls back play for a penalty. Well, he's got the chance to score from 12 yards. But if we miss this, I will not be happy. Why didn't he play advantage? The goal was gaping. De Costa versus Gherkin. I'm going to go to our right and his left hand side. And it is indeed saved. I'm blaming that on the referee. It's a brilliant save by Gherkin, isn't it? It's a nice penalty too, right in the bottom corner. But he guesses correctly and turns it behind for a corner. It's been all Nottingham Forest in this first half. But still, we're deadlocked at 0-0. Collins controls. And the Akabi has space to shoot. And twice it's blocked. And, oh, yes, come on. There's the goal. But, oh, it's going to be disallowed for offside. I can't believe it. Oh, poor pass, Clough, De Costa. Oh, lovely turn. Off the post, third time we've hit the woodwork tonight. It's just going to be one of those games. Oh, Clough, can you win it? No, big interception, and that will do it. 
Penalty shootout. How on earth did we not score in this game? So many chances, but missed a lot of them. I don't feel confident. I don't feel one bit confident. The Akavi is going to take our first one. We're going to go to Gherkin's right-hand side this time. And, oh, he's a penalty-saving king. As Norris puts it off target. Saves one in normal time and the first in the shootout. And saves another. And that shot goes over. Extraordinary. Surely he's not going to make it three in a row, is he? He denied the Costa in normal time, and this time, our number nine gets the better of him. Lapsley. Hits the post. They've missed every penalty. Clough off the bench. Has it saved? Stevenson. Oh, Murich with the save, and that gives us the chance to make it through on the worst penalty shootout of all time. The young man, Ryan Yates, can put us in to round two. It's Yates, and it's saved again. Does anyone want to go through to the second round? Senior. Oh, he's in the post. Too calm, too cool, but not cool enough. Colchester United missed five straight penalties. The worst shootout of all time, but we're through. I could not feel more sorry for their goalkeeper, Dean Gherkin. Made save after save in normal time, including from the spot, and four penalty saves in the shootout too. Let down by his teammates though, and we escaped to make it through. I definitely think we need to get a new striker for the bench. I'm, I'm not too confident about De Costa as our backup for Ollie Watkins. I prefer some younger blood, someone hungrier. And I must say, Troy Parrott, you guys recommended. If we could get him in on loan, I'd, I'd certainly take it. Will Spurs let us do that? No, unfortunately not. In that case, I'm thinking perhaps Tyrese Campbell or Danny Loder from Stoke City or Reading. Certainly one of those two to, to come off the bench, you know, fresh legs, injection of pace and energy. Wouldn't be against either of them. As the scout reports have just been finished as well. I want to take a look at the overalls of these two players here and see who's higher valued and might have a higher ceiling as well. Uh, Loader is 63 overall. And whilst he is a year younger than Tyrese Campbell. Oh, Campbell's got a four-star weak foot. I missed that initially. 67 rated, only 19. I love the pace. He's got strength as well. And 67 finishing it bad either. And 73 penalties. Well, I think that might well make my mind up for me. High, medium work rates. Yeah, I'm going to go for Tyrese Campbell. Oh, that's interesting. I've just found out. He's the son of Kevin Campbell, once of Arsenal, and guess who? Nottingham Forest. Played for them in the 90s. So, like father, like son, let's bring Tyrese to the city ground. And Stoke want an extra 50 grand, but no sell-on clause to the teenage talent. And, yep, let's bring him here. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing this guy play in a Nottingham Forest shirt. Well, he wants a slight wage increase of £300 a week, but that is more than fine with me. Dad would be proud. Kevin watches on as son Tyrese completes the move from Stoke City to Nottingham Forest. Tyrese Campbell, welcome to the city ground. I like the look of him a lot. I really do. Striker and right midfield listed positions. I'm going to give him a number 26 because that's what he wears for Stoke City right now. But I definitely see this guy as a big part of our future plans. Again, high medium work rates, four star weak foot. Very, very quick. And again, off the bench, a raw young talent with pace, running at tired legs. I think he'll be great in late game situations. And he might well get a chance to make his debut as he's on the bench for our third and final game. As you welcome the Blues, Birmingham City to the city ground back in the championship. After just about scraping by in the EFL Cup in midweek, we need a better performance here with Birmingham. Birmingham yet to get a point in their first two games. They'll be desperate to get their first or perhaps even three here today. Final game, it's Birmingham City. We haven't started any of our three games off very well since we joined Nottingham Forest. And that's what I want to change. I want to go at teams and early on in matches, get early goals and early chances. And right on cue, there might be a chance here. It's the kid, Johnson, bearing down on goal. Oh, go on. Go on, take it yourself, mate. Oh, yeah. What a goal! Johnson goes all the way. Perfect start. Go on, young man. Goal scorer for Nottingham Forest. Number 40, Brennan Johnson. 18 years old. And his first in professional football. Local lad, born in Nottingham. Scores for his boyhood club. Forest in front. And that's what it means. 
Colleen down the right, crossing, good delivery too, and Figueredo did very well to clear. And as Silver finds Johnson, you can hear the crowd going, go on, and getting off their seats as Brennan drives forward again. The kid taken down by Sundic by behind. He's driving forward today and driving the team forward. Surely just a booking. But 18 minutes in, all coming together. Johnson really getting fired up out there. Referee saying last warning. What a start the kids put in. Bella crossing and a good clearance by Sam as it'll drop kindly to Diago Silva. And they could possibly start a break here. Johnson to Lolly and a man on the overlap is Matty Cash. And a golden chance here as Cash is away. Look at the red shirt storming forward. There's a man in the middle. It's Lolly. It's Watkins. It's two, Ollie Watkins, second goal in two home games. The former Brentford man is looking a fan's favourite already. And this is a moment this young man won't forget in a hurry. Tyrese Campbell, about to make his Nottingham Forest debut. This Joe Lolly comes off. Kevin, Dad, I'm sure in the stand somewhere as we still lead by two. 17 minutes to go, but seems like the three points are in the bag here. It's Figueroa's header, takes a deflection and goes in. I think it came off Pedersen, and I think our centre-half will claim it. I'm not sure if the dubious goals pan will take it away from him, but for now, he's saying that one's mine. Bong to Johnson. And Brennan's going to kick it out wide towards Ollie Watkins, now on the right-hand side for us here. And Watkins has done well to beat his man. He's going to have a go for a tight angle. Why not? Oh, he's found it as well. Ollie Watkins with his second goal of the game. What a performance. 4 0. Birmingham City's wait for their first point of the season will continue. But for Nottingham Forest, our best win of the season thus far. So impressed with our young players out there. An excellent display. 4-0, the final score. And what are the odds that Ollie Watkins is going to win the Golden Boot this season? Well, I think those odds are shortening by the day. And that's why he is going to share the champagne with young Brennan Johnson today. The 18-year-old put in a fantastic performance with a goal and an assist as he set up Ollie's second of his two goals today. Great performance by the duo. And that will end today's episode of Career Mode as well, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you for next episode very soon we'll be stationed in the nation's capital with free games in london